So glad to join with you for another moment around God's Word and prayer today. And this week between Christmas and New Year's, we wanted to prepare our heart for the way of the Lord. There was somebody who came out of the Christmas story besides Jesus. It was John the Baptist. And he was called by God to prepare the way for the coming of the public ministry of Jesus. And that's why his, his, his sermons could be reduced to one word, repent. Repent, because that's what clears the way. That's what makes way for the Lord to come into our lives. It's a word many people don't like very much. It's a word that tends, in fact, to be ignored, or at least reduced to good intentions. But repentance is very tangible, and it's very powerful. And it's here that John the Baptist can be our mentor in terms of preparing the way of the Lord through repentance that's, that's more than a prayer, it, it results in a life, lifestyle change. So it says to us in Luke chapter 3 and verse 3, he, John the Baptist, went into all the country around Jordan preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He would later baptize Jesus and Jesus would start his public ministry. But th this is just before Jesus. John was probably born about a half a year before Jesus was. And uh, he, he is now gone public like Jesus was about to. And, and, and as he's preaching repentance, verse 7 says, uh, John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? So this was not exactly um, a seeker-sensitive, sen uh, seeker friendly pas pastor here. He was, he was, in, he was in their face. And, and he was not dressed like, like the... Uh, religious aristocracy in Jerusalem. In fact, he never goes near Jerusalem. He stays out in the wilderness. He's dressed in camel's hair. He doesn't eat fine food at banquets. He eats locusts and wild honey, the Bible tells us. He, he looked like a wild man. He was in every way a contradiction to the sophistication and elitism of the religious aristocracy in Jerusalem. He had come to confront their cold, blind hearts and eyes and, and, and to call them to repent. And, and, so he, and so he said, well, who told you to come and repent? You know? and, uh, and so the crowd says, verse 10, well, what should we do then? The crowd asks. What, like, what does repentance really mean for us? And John answered, anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none. And anyone who has food should do the same. Compassion for the poor, unselfishness, generosity to those not as privileged as we are. That's what repentance looks like. So the tax collectors even came to be baptized. They were hated by the Jews because they were viewed as sellouts to the Romans. Even the tax collectors came to be baptized. And teacher, they asked, what shall we do well, he said, because they were notorious for ripping people off, you don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. So he goes to the small business owner today and said, what does repentance look like? Don't overcharge your customers. Don't, don't cheat your clients. Only, only collect what you're required to do and what you need to reasonably operate your business. Then in verse 14, then some of the soldiers, you could be Roman soldiers, came to him. What should we do if we repent? And he said, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely and be content with your pay. I mean, these Roman soldiers, they could push people around. They could take bribes on the side so they wouldn't mistreat people instead of mistreating people. And, 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 and you know, and they were just greedy. They weren't content with their pay. What a picture of, of repentance lived out, that we give what we have to the poor and that we don't rip off our customers and take advantage of people, we, that, that we don't use people for our personal meeting, our personal needs or greeds. And of all things, we'll just be content. This is what a life of repentance looks like. There's a hard dimension to repentance but there's also an ethical lifestyle dimension, and John the Baptist takes us that way 
as he was saying, would you prepare the way of the Lord? Let God's Holy Spirit get into the way you live and the way you relate to the people around you. Our Father, would you help us with this? Fill us with your Spirit. Help true repentance and heart preparation take place in our lives as we enter a new year. Break and forgive and break the selfishness in our lives and the way we manipulate people and we use people for our own benefit. And my God, forgive us for our discontent. And God, we repent and we ask that you will give us new lives. In Jesus' name, amen.